Well, they, uh, you know, it's a, it's a physical ball club, and uh, you know they've got four guys in conference that are, uh, you know, headed <coughs> at the front of the pack by Chase on Randall. Um, four guys in double figures. Uh, you know, a lot of different weapons. Post player Wayne's Brown. Um, you know, they run a lot of the, the triangle offense movement, spacing, and, and those guys have played together for quite a while now moving forward. So it's, uh, you know, it's a, it's a really solid basketball team. Johnny Dawkins done a great job and, and they defend uh, a number of different defenses and move the ball real well on offense and, and don't rely on any one guy. And, uh, you know, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to be really solid against them. Well, I, you know, two things come to mind probably more than anything is, uh, is, is our willingness to share the basketball and, and oftentimes we'll pass up a good shot and, and get a great shot and uh, you know everybody's buying into it it's a it's for the most part it's pretty darn fun to be a part of it's it's like the opposite of uh, selfishness it's selflessness that we talk about in our program and it being about the team and and um, very rarely do we take bad shots you know it drives me crazy as a, as a coach one of my pet peeves is to take four shots, and uh, we don't we don't take very many of them. We grade grade our shot value when the game's over, one through five, and and everybody, for the most part, is grading in the fours somewhere where we're taking four and five value shots. And I think when it's a good shot, it means it's an open shot. So that's that's probably uh, the function number one. And then the other the other part of it that I think sometimes goes a little bit overlooked is. Uh, you know, maybe in years past, we had enough things broken within our offensive and defensive schemes that you don't you don't schedule enough practice time uh, to shoot. And I think sometimes that's overlooked. And and so we, in a two-hour practice, we probably spend a half an hour of it in some shoot some form of shooting drills. And um, you know, I was reminded by some of our assistant coaches this offseason that let's shoot let's shoot more. And sometimes I think you just go. You know, we're either going to be able to, but it's like any skill. You know, if you don't work on your passing, you're not going to be a very good passing team. And if you don't work on your shooting, but I also think it's one of the easiest things when you're struggling a little bit to uh, to overlook. So we built it into our practice plans, and I think there's some some benefit to, to that as well. So I think combination of those two things leads to a better better percentage. Well, I think uh, you took the majority of last week off and uh, received a lot of treatment. Didn't mm -hmm. practice until Friday. So, you know, part of it's going to be conditioning and a feel to get back on the floor, but he, he did some pretty uh, substantial damage to his ankle. It was, it was, it wasn't a, you know, a moderate sprain. It was, it was, you know, closer to an uh, excessive type injury. So it, it takes some time for those ligaments to heal. And, uh, but I do think he's back now. He mentioned the other day to Trevor, our trainer, that he, he's not feeling any pain in it anymore. He just feels a little bit of weakness. And so that's, that's encouraging news, I think, for us to not have him, you know, feel it. But it's just a matter of kind of getting things uh, tuned up again in there. So I think this week will be good for him, and and having him back in our lineup uh, provides us with a little bit of rebounding punch, I think, defensively, and certainly a post presence and a you know an active big. So I think his best basketball, uh, hopefully, is ahead of him here going down the stretch run with eight remaining games. Well, we talk about it, you know, uh, it's, it's one of the words in our, in our uh, culture uh, that we talk about the team first, the selfless mentality. And, and one of the other things that we mention all the time, it's not that you think less of yourself, it's that you think of yourself less. And uh, so I think reminders to guys that the team first mentality comes into play and um, it's a little bit contagious. You know, it's something that we don't just hand out at the beginning of the year that, hey, this is the way we want to play. But it's it's talked about you know, certainly weekly, um, you know, built into our program. And when it happens in practice, when some bad shots get taken, guys are reminded. And uh, it doesn't take long. I think it's just, it's probably about the same magnitude that you have when you have a selfish team, you know. And sometimes shots go up fast and guys start thinking they're never going to get it back again. And so you... You get pretty dysfunctional uh, as a team that way at the other end of the spectrum, and I think it's it's a real positive 
way to play when you, you know that you don't have to shoot this one because there's a pretty good chance the ball can come back to me. So um, a lot of what we're talking about right now is predicated on our defense and we're not spending a lot of time talking about our offense and, and you know I, I, I believe in karma and, and trying to play the game the right way and, and I do believe that our defense uh, defensive mentality is is trickling into the offensive end and uh, and helping us to play the right way. No, he's he's been fine. It was a little bit of a phantom phantom pain. I had some issues with his patella, his kneecap, and maybe there was a little something floating under there that was causing some pain, but it's no longer there, and and uh, he did fine. So uh, our guys got a, a real uh, positive report this morning from from Trevor and. I think we're in pretty good shape as far as health goes this time of year. No, it's a great question. I, uh, I jumped into the Twitter world a while back. I don't know when it was, and I was having a little bit of fun with it. Um, you know, I think it's, there's a lot of positives with it. And uh, what happened to us last year, as I found out, it was a little bit interesting. You know, I made a promise to our players uh, you know, no disrespect to the public or anything else that's going on, but we've got a pretty tight-knit group of players and coaches within our inner circle that number's probably less than 25. And I think sometimes if you're not getting the kind of feedback that you need from that group, whether it's a teammate or a coach or whoever it might be, then I noticed last year that one of the first things that would happen when a game would be over is we'd have the phones light up in the locker room and it was everybody trying to seek out you know, whether it was an opinion of how they played or, you know. Um, and I just reminded everybody at the beginning of this year and I, I shut my Twitter account down and just I was just somewhat pledging my uh, allegiance, alliance to our guys. And I was going to try to provide more feedback for them, whether it's positive or negative. Uh, I wasn't relying on any outside source to tell me if I was doing a good job or if I should be fired. Because um, a lot of that stuff is, is can be pretty venomous, you know, and you have to be able to take the good with the bad. And sometimes that hurts, especially when you're 20 years old. You think you've got allies and people that are in your corner, but the first minute things don't go well, all of a sudden something can be said and it can have a, it can have a crazy effect uh, on people, not just 20 year olds, but 50 year olds like myself. So it's, it's not worth taking a chance. Uh, so I'm trying to build this little rapport, I think, within our group that any feedback you need that really counts and opinions that count are going to come from within. And I don't know what's happened. And there were a number of guys that said they weren't going to do social media. I haven't followed it to find out if people have kept up on their little pledges with it. But I think we're trying to provide more feedback for our guys and pat them on the back a little bit more when they need it and, you know, kick them, kick them in the rump when they need it. And hopefully they're trusting our opinion far more than they are not. And a lot of times what's a total stranger. So, um, you know, it's the days are winding down. I think I put 140 days on the chalkboard. I do this for every season, and have since I can ever since I've coached. Is I put the days in the season up in the left corner until the championship game of the Pac-12 tournament, and then the number of wins in the right corner, and you get a little element of time. And I think the first meeting we had this year was 130, 140 days, whatever it was. Well, now we're down to roughly 30 days. Uh, it was just 34 as of our game in Colorado. So as those days wind down, I think it's important for us again to, you know, some goals are within reach and some things are really important and there's not enough time, nor do we have enough energy to focus a lot outside of our little circle. So it's, uh, it's imperative, I think, right now that everybody stays pretty focused and we don't have any rules. Um, you know, we've, We've reprimanded some guys in years past that hasn't happened this year that have decided, some guys want our own team that decided to use social media to express an opinion. Uh, that didn't go over so well in our mind. Um, so there's, you know, I, I think again, you don't need to have a big rule book. You just, you kind of know what, how we do things around here and, and hopefully guys aren't making mistakes uh, in, their, in their use of it. Before. Yeah, Kyle had a, had a really good week of practice, actually a couple weeks of practice. And, I, and I, uh, one of the things I pay close attention to, and it's never easy for a freshman, um, 
you know, Brandon Taylor was one of those guys about two thirds of the way through his freshman year. I don't know that Brandon played much. Probably had 15 DNPs, did not play, coach's decision kind of deal. And yet he came coming to practice every day with the little edge, excuse me, with the little edge to him. Uh, wasn't pouting, wasn't, you know, some guys' body language is, oh, I'm, I'm kind of getting short end of the stick here. I'm going to transfer. That's kind of human nature now as things are going. You know, and, and it drives me crazy. It drives me crazy with my own kids uh, in their AAU and different basketball. Because there's so many choices now. You know, it's like, oh, if things don't go well, I'm just going to go quit, take my ball, go home, and I'll find another team. Um, and Kyle, uh, there was a little bit of a moment of truth maybe a month ago where there was a little bit of that starting to creep in. And, and we've had some discussions, and he's been bringing his, his lunchbox day to practice and he's open to learning and he's working hard and I think really um, you, you need to have a little bit of adversity in order to be successful and you know you, you need to kind of get knocked in the dirt a little bit and that's what happens a lot of time with freshmen and so he's responded really well he had a great week I think he's one of our better rebounders uh, whether he's playing the three or the four he's got a knack to go get some rebounds as evidence in Colorado I think he had six boards if I'm not mistaken in limited minutes so that was our focus in that game, you know, and I think he may be a better rebounder than Burkott. So uh, that was, that he was the first guy, one of the first guys to go in the game as a big and, and he did his duty and went and got us some rebounds and um, he's got a bright future and he's done it the right way so far. So, you know, from my perspective, he's an easy guy to cheer for and, and if you come out and practice and earn some minutes, then you're going to be rewarded with them. And I think that's what happened. Well, it, for sure. I mean, he's a, uh, he's a small, he's a big, small, He's a big, small forward now. So he's not a small power forward anymore. So uh, he gets a little nasty in practice when some rebounding drills. And I've challenged him even <coughs> last week to, to take that out on somebody else. You know, quit trying to beat up Kuzma and Dakari and get rebounds and go get some other ones. And I, we watched a number of our Colorado clips from the year before in the hotel at our dinner the night before the game. And I think there was some clips of Jordan in there that didn't have that edge to him. And it was a nice little challenge and he came out and anytime you can get 10 rebounds, our guards rebounded well and collectively we rebounded well. We out rebounded Colorado, um, you know, at, at, at their place, a uh, substantial number, I think eight plus eight if I'm not mistaken, or 12, I don't remember. But it was, it was good and that was the first thing we wrote on the board. So um, I think it's important to have a little physical edge. As we know this time of year, as you close down the season, some of the points of emphasis with the level of physicality in the game kind of start going out the window. You know, as it was compared to early on when a lot of hand checks and bumping and different things, it's kind of the nature of a season as it starts to wind down that it gets more and more physical. And certainly when you get into Pac-12 tournament play and postseason play, nine out of 10 times, if there's a question as to whether or not there should be a whistle, you'll see good officials probably not blow their whistle. So. We need to take our game to a little different level and, and certainly become more physical. I have no idea this handicap and stuff. I've said it all along. I think you you grind it out, and when you're done with 18, that's really and it's happened. I remember it happened in the last two years. We had a little coaches get together at my house on Sunday night before the Pac-12 tournament. And one year it was like a six-way tie or something, and the year we played USC first some kind of crazy tiebreaker. And it wasn't until like that night that they figured out the formula to who played who. And then it was like, okay, that's now we're 18 games down, whatever we were. And now let's see if we can go win one. So I don't, I don't have any concern at all about how it falls or, and it even happens in my home where we watched games <clears throat> yesterday and my family, my girls and boys are, oh, dad, who are we cheering for? Right. And I said, I, I think you just focus on our, I told everybody in my, my little kids, I said, let's just focus on our games. Cheer for the youths when they're playing. And I think everybody else may the best team win because you got to be careful what you wish for. Sometimes you're wishing for somebody to lose a game and it, who knows what happens. It might change the, the bracket in Las Vegas and you might have wanted to play somebody else at the end of the day. So I, I think it's, uh, it's fun. It's a, you know, as you start to get some closure and you're past the halfway point and starting to bring it down the, you know, as, to use a horse racing term, handicap the home stretch. Uh, then I think things heat up and you start using some hypothetical situations. But for the most part, it's 
our philosophy is just to take care of our own little yard, <clears throat> our own little horse track. <laughs>